Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast, and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. We have an update on that mobile intensive care unit in Lackawanna County that lost a wheel last night. We told you at 6 that the MICU had a problem with a wheel bearing after it met up with the Duryea ambulance responding to a call. Tonight, Newswatch 16's Bob Costantini talked to paramedics who were looking over another McUnit at Scranton CMC. They say that since local ambulances often drive with the MICU, patients would not suffer if something were to go wrong with the unit. Medical equipment on board the MICU is portable and can be taken out if necessary. It's no different than a BLS unit or basic life support unit. It's the people and the equipment that make the difference. And we can move everything. Everything's portable. We just take our equipment and go. Since the MICU that lost a wheel is a Ford, we asked a Ford mechanic if it's a frequent problem. He says it's not, and he sees no need for any other ambulances with Ford chassis to specifically have their wheel bearings checked. If you have Gerber's strained baby food on your shelves, listen. Gerber Foods is voluntarily recalling 168,000 jars of strained chicken and chicken broth in 15 states, including Pennsylvania and New York. They may contain glass fragments. A Michigan consumer found two pieces of glass. A check of other jars at the same store revealed more. Once again, it's a recall of three and one half ounce jars of Gerber's strained chicken and chicken broth showing an expiration date of October 5th, 1986 on the lid. Take them back to your store. Joe Zone and the sports department are going football crazy tonight, and we'll have that in a little while. The next, meteorologist Paul Hepner with the weekend forecast. Jackets mm. all weekend, Paul? I think so. Uh -oh. It's rather nippy out there right now. A little bit of rain out there. And when we come back, I'll tell you if the rain is going to be with us all weekend long. Penn State, Texas, tomorrow. Well, let's find out how cool it's going to be for the weekend. Paul? Cool. <laughs> it's going to be really cool, I think, tomorrow, Nolan and Karen. Uh, once again, it'll be uh, in the 40s and 50s, but gradually warming up as we head through the weekend. You can tell we've had some big changes in the weather recently. Let's take a look at those current readings today. High temperatures of what we stand at currently at 48 degrees. Relative humidity is also quite high with the drizzle and fog. Northeast winds 5 miles per hour. The high temperature, as I mentioned, 48 degrees today. And the low temperature last night, are we going to see it? There it is at 44. The high, normal high is 69, and normal low is 48. Here's a view from space for you this evening on the Newswatch 16 color satellite picture. And this was taken during the early evening hours, showing you lots of low clouds and fog over Pennsylvania. Uh, lots of cold winter weather back up over the upper Midwest. But all eyes are focused down over Florida, where we're looking at tropical storm Isidore. Let's take a close-up view now of Isidore. This is a latest shot that came in around 10 p.m. this evening. A close-up view of Isidore showing you some heavy rains that are right along the coast of uh, well, Georgia and up in to South Carolina. The storm is centered near Jacksonville and it is moving to the northeast. Could affect our weather this later on this weekend. Not tomorrow, but perhaps late tomorrow night and Saturday and Sunday. Here's the forecast for tonight. As I see it, damp and murky, 45 in New Milford, Durant's 46 degrees. Most of the viewing area tonight should be in the 40s. Okay, for tomorrow, a cool shower is possible to one at 54. Carbondale, cool, 52 degrees tomorrow. Not much of a change in Almedia, where the temperature will be 56. Here's the sunrise and sunset for you for tomorrow. As I see it, coming up at 658. I hope I see it. And going down at 649. Tonight, some sprinkles and fog, 46 degrees. A shower possible tomorrow. Then some sunshine, a little bit of sunshine on Sunday. I'm not going to hold my breath on a great day. 58 degrees, the clearing skies on Monday, and mild temperatures returning for Tuesday. So, Karen and Nolan, there is hope for optimism as we head through the weekend. All right, that's good news. Yeah, be optimistic. Right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Sports lovers, hang in there. 16 Sports Final is next. And what a busy night Joe and Tim are having. We'll show you the highlights shortly. Hi, this is Sergeant Peter Fry of the Pennsylvania Army National Guard. Attention non-high school graduates. Are you having trouble getting in the military service because you lack a high school diploma or a GED? A recent policy change now allows us, the Army Guard, to put you in without a high school diploma and without a GED. Hey, this is your big break. 
Give me a call today at Nanticoke at 735-8117, and we'll start talking about a military career for you. Well, it turned out to be a pretty remarkable night of high school football. Ten of our Super 16 teams in action, including the Super 16 game of the week. It was just that top-ranked Mount Carmel and second-ranked Berwick. Tim, 10,000 people Maybe 12. there tonight. Maybe 12,000 12. at that game? ball game tonight. And I don't remember you and I making a prediction before the game, do you? I didn't make any predictions. Some people thought that. But anyway, I could tell you it was a great ball game tonight. Fireworks before the game. And I'll tell you, George Curry was going for a record with his Bulldog team, 38 in a row, tying a record set in the Southern Division by Shikolemis from 1964 to 67. Let's find out if they got it right now. Let's take a look at the highlights. Mount Carmel took the opening kickoff in the first quarter in 17 plays down to the Berwick 12, but the drive ended as Jamie Slusser picked off this Rod Kwiatkowski pass. Mount Carmel's next possession. They're driving again. Mike Dimonick's option pass intercepted by Charlie Federko and Berwick takes over, but the Bulldogs just couldn't move the ball. And at the half, there was no score. As a matter of fact, both teams with only a couple of first downs. A lot of people thought this was even up going in. And at halftime, as you can see, that's just the way it is. And if these two clubs keep playing the way they did in the first half, it just may end the way it started. Nothing, nothing. But the Bulldogs changed that idea very quickly. Second play from scrimmage in the second half. Watch back Bill Knorr go 53 yards down to the Mount Carmel nine yard line. Two plays later, quarterback Butch Melito rolls left. You see him go on the keeper and it's seven nothing Berwick. The Bulldogs next possession. Six plays and a 32 yard pass play. Melito to Pete to Pippa. The point after good and it's 14 nothing Berwick. But the big play team came up with one from the big play man, coach's son, Mike Dimonick. Watch him here on this punt. First of all, he's not even supposed to try to field this kind of a punt, run it back. Look him go to the outside. Look at him go to the outside. He's going to go 72 yards up the sidelines. And it's a touchdown. The two-point conversion was good. And all of a sudden, it's 14-8 Berwick over Mount Carmel after three. But the Bulldogs grinded out offense went on a 15-play drive, eating up the clock in the fourth quarter. This 32-yard field goal by Dennis Tuzza was the winner. The final, Berwick 17, Mount Carmel 8. George Curry wins number 38 in a row. I think our team, the second half, played up to their potential. I think the first half, uh, I think it was tough. We had a tough situation. You know, we weren't playing. No. We come out a little, uh, I don't know, we're overconfident or a little nervous or a little tense. Like I tell you, we had a young team this year. and. Once we settled down, we did the job. Certainly did do the job. Let's go to the scoreboard now. First of all, Berwick over Mount Carmel, 17-8. Here you see other Eastern Conference scores. Shenandoah over Bishop Hafey, 30-6. Shemokin beat North Schuylkill, 3-0. Shikolemi over Milton, 28-6. Danville was losing to some... Tamaqua beat them, 41-19. Blue Mountain over Williams Valley, 12-8. Central Columbia over West Hazleton, 10-8. And Joe, our number three team, North Pocono, was in action tonight. I think that number one meant that the Berwick kids were waving at <laughs> our faces tonight. I couldn't think of what it meant. <laughs> A year ago, Prep beat North Pocono, the only regular season loss for them, looking for some revenge tonight, and they got it. That North Pocono, a good team. You know this guy, number 15, Jim Haddock, the quarterback, to number 42, Todd Leitner, and it's good there for the touchdown, a 41-yard touchdown, extra point, good Trojan 7-zip. Then number 31, Scotty Strong with a 19-yard play, watching coming at you down to the three-yard line. Big gainer there, first and goal for the Trojans at the three. Strong takes it in from there for another Trojan touchdown. Smith misses the extra point, and it's 13-0. Couple of incomplete passes here intended for P.J. Kelly and Leitner again by Jim Bahanek. And then Bahanek goes up top again to Bill DeSantis for a 14-yard touchdown. Smith kicks the extra point. The score, 20-0. Final score, 27-13. North Polk, another winning big. Okay, now the Big 11 scoreboard. Riverside beats Scranton Tech 14 0. Old Forge over Lakeland 7 0. How about that game? Three and a half quarters of scoreless play. Lakeland punts now, but roughing the kicker penalty sparked action. Third down, Lakeland quarterback Brian Schweppenhauser sacked by Old Forge's Mark Rayner. And the sixth. Okay, that forces Lakeland to punt again. They can't do anything. 
but late in the game now, last drive coming up, only one score. Watch this, old Ford's now dropping. Krzyzewski passes to Kyle Parker, down to the six yard line. Seven seconds left in the game. Dave Copa goes over for the touchdown. Down to the six, and then Copa goes in with just, uh, there it is, seven seconds left. I knew I'd finally catch up. Final score, seven nothing, big win for old Fours. Let's go to the Eastern Conference scoreboard, okay? This one doesn't count for much, except it's a win for Crestwood, 9-6. Southern Columbia over St. Clair, 54-12. East Penn Conference, Parkland, 26-6. Emmaus over Allentown, Allen, 21-14. Liberty and Whitehall postponed. And Bethlehem Catholic beat Easton, the final there, 11-0. Our ninth and 10th ranked teams playing tonight in the Wyoming Valley Conference. Tim? Joe, you are right. And Nanticoke is pointing towards a showdown with Wyoming area tonight at Bishop Hope. And let's pick it up right now. Nanticoke gets the ball moving. Watch this nice punt return. It's a great kick, too. But watch the punt return up the sidelines. And it gets Nanticoke in a great position to do some scoring. Now, quarterback Phillips for a big gainer. You'll see the great pass over to the sidelines. Number 88 picks it up and goes down deep into Bishop Hoban territory, and then the touchdown for Nanakoke. They are still undefeated. They win it 33-0 over Bishop Hoban. Now, our 10th ranked team looking to bounce back against Myers. Wyoming Valley West, there's only one touchdown this game. Myers on the move, this connection, big play to the Mohawk, the Mohawks drive. Now coming at you for another big gainer, and then, as I said, the only touchdown of the game, a short little pass, Right here into the end zone, 7-0 the final, and Valley West has lost two in a row. Check the Wyoming Valley scoreboard. Number nine, Nana Coke beat Bishop Hoban. Myers upset number 10, Wyoming Valley West. Centennial League, Lee Heighton over Pleasant Valley, 49-12. Pocono Mountain knocked off by Northern Lehigh. Notre Dame, 16, Palmerton, 7. Southern Lehigh beat Banger, make that Banger over Southern Lehigh, 9-7. An unusual Eastern Conference game tonight between 5th-ranked Wyoming area and 14th-ranked Pottsville. Game didn't count in the standings, but John Evans says don't tell the players that. The Warriors got the first break of the game when on their second possession, Leo Malski punted to Pottsville's number 20, Mike Rosenberger. He fumbled and Wyoming area recovered. Malski then went to the air. Here he hits number 21, Kenny Kopechny, who makes a nice catch for a 20-yard gain. Four plays later, number 42, Joe Bednarski, goes two yards off left tackle for a touchdown. The point after made it 7-0 Wyoming area. On Pottsville's first play after the kickoff, number 20, Rosenberger fumbled again, and again the Warriors recovered at the tied 33. Eight plays later, number 45, Scott Nicholson went off left tackle, this time from the three, to make it 14-0 halfway through the second quarter. The Tide mounted their best drive after the kickoff, but on the Wyoming area 34, number 44, John Sakina fumbled, and Wyoming area recovered. Neither team got close the rest of the half. It ended 14-0 Wyoming area. Pottsville's hope for the second half is that they bring back Stickham to football because their three fumbles have led to all 14 of Wyoming area's points. The Warriors, when they've gotten the ball, have played ball control just like they have all season long. The closest the Tide came to scoring in the second half was on their second possession, but the fourth down pass from Laller Joyce, the quarterback, to number 87, Ed Welsh, fell seven yards short of a first down. The Warriors drove to the Pottsville four with time running out, but they didn't put it in the end zone. The final score, Wyoming area 14, Pottsville nothing. We've done a great job on defense. Our kids have really come together. Uh, we've been hitting hard, and uh, I think that's a tribute again to my coaching staff. Uh, our kids played hard, and uh, uh, we came down here to win. We went down here on a vacation. John, Newswatch, 16 sports in Pottsville. Okay, scoreboard, West Branch, winners, Warrior Run, Muncie uh, knocked off by Loyal Sock, Williamsport, South Williamsport beat Jersey Shore, Stroudsburg over Nazareth, Newport beat Millersburg, and Penns Valley beat West Branch. Our seventh ranked team, Honesdale, home tonight with Montrose. And Joe, the Hornets are still undefeated after a win tonight. Let's check it out now. It's 22-0 as we pick it up in the second quarter. Montrose with the ball. Number 21, Maverick Wilcox goes back for the pass and is swamped by Honesdale defenders. Number 80, Lee Spores comes up with it. Runs for 26 yards in the touchdown. And the final score on this ball game tonight was 33 
to nothing, or I'm sorry, 49 to 6, Honesdale over Montrose. All right, we got it right. Now the scoreboard. Bald Eagle, I'm allowed one mistake. Bald Eagle area over Tyrone, 6 nothing. Belfont, Lockhaven tied at 20 20. State College over Altoona, 20 to 7. Bucktail beat Hughesville, 20 to nothing. Sealands Grove over Mifflinburg, 20 to 7. Juniata beat East Juniata, 35 14. Northern Tier, Sarah beat North Penn, 8 7. Tawanda over Troy, 24 15. Kalineski Valley knocked off by Wellsboro, 34 7. Tomorrow, number four, Valley View will be at Abington. Eighth ranked Montoursville at Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle Nittany. You've got Penn State and Texas tomorrow. I like Penn State by six. I like Penn State, too, to win it. Okay, that's all the time we've got. Kansas City has clinched a tie because uh, Minnesota lost tonight. We'll be back right See after this. Well, we're almost out of time for Newswatch 16 update for a Friday. We'll leave you at the Bloomsburg Fair. Tomorrow's the last day. So, for the entire team, thank you for being with us. Good night and have a great weekend. Fair to explain. Karen? Well, Nolan, every... Our own farm was reaping.